helper and all that. She feels it in her heart. It's not something that someone's told her to go out and do. He is, uh, he's just that kind of an individual. And it's because of her that they get that second chance. And I'm just there to kind of help guide them along. She's been a motivator, a comforter. She cares that much. And they want to please someone who demands excellence. You got all these people helping, and that brings a great deal of satisfaction. Hello, and happy Thanksgiving from our THV 11 family to yours. I'm Denise Middleton. You know, when you think of a hero, Superman or Wonder Woman may come to mind, but the real heroes are those disguised around you. Today, THV 11 is thanking our everyday heroes. So let's begin our special with a story of survival and lifelong friendship right here in Little Rock. When the fire alarm goes off, firefighters drop everything and race to an emergency. But it typically ends there. They'll likely never meet the person they've saved. I won't be able to break you. <laughs> but Cherie Vazell was adamant about meeting the men she says saved her life. They're my heroes. They're my angels. I, I truly believe they're my angels. On the morning of December 30th, 2012, Cherie was driving near a woman who lost control of her vehicle and slammed into the concrete median along the I-440 bridge. She immediately pulled over and ran across the interstate to help. I literally thought that I was going to just be able to call 911 and get her some assistance to go back to my truck. Cherie never made it to her truck. I picked up my phone to call. I looked up and turned back and I saw a tractor trailer had jackknife. It was heading towards her and the woman inside the vehicle. Cherie began to literally run for her life. I felt something hit me in my back and then everything went black. Cherie had been knocked 40 feet off the bridge. Moments later, Fire Station Rescue 2 arrived to the scene. We made an initial sweep of that area below the bridge and didn't see anything at first. But just as they were about to write it off as misinformation. I screamed out twice, help, somebody help me. And I saw a guy, he happened to look over and he screamed out, there she is. Firefighters immediately sprung into action and began to set up a rope rescue system. This is the one of the most technical rescues we've had. Jason Gamble would be the first to rappel down the rope. It was real icy that day. There was ice all over the side of the bridge and it was kind of precarious getting over the edge and and getting to where you could just slide down the rope all the way to the ground. Jesse Clark came down after him. To their surprise, Cherie was conscious as they began to assess her injuries. My bones were sticking out, um, the flesh was hanging over my legs, and I asked him if I was gonna die. And he said, no, you're not gonna die, we have you now. I said, okay. Cherie and the woman she tried to help were both taken to the hospital. The driver only had minor injuries, but Cherie spent two weeks in the hospital and three months in rehab after suffering multiple fractures, torn ligaments, and a severed spleen. Some of the doctors thought that I should have either been dead, paralyzed, or head injury because of the severity of what happened. As soon as she was able to get back on her feet, she tracked down all of the firefighters who helped rescue her and brought them care packages, not once or twice, but every month since then. And when she first started coming up here, she was on crutches, and now she comes up here dancing. She eats with us sometimes, and we hang out, and she's part of the family. What began as a regular day on the job has now blossomed into a meaningful friendship. And though Cherie has no doubt in her mind that they are her heroes, to them, she too is a hero. She stopped on an icy road during a wreck to help someone else. So really, those are the people that are our heroes. Wow, well, in this next story, a beloved North Little Rock police officer says one woman's love and willingness to always go out and make a difference inspired him to do the same. Irene Sanders has promoted safety, neighborhood awareness, and racial harmony for years. She also started the Landsbrook Neighborhood Awareness Days and block parties. Irene raised six children of her own and knows it takes a village to raise just one. So she always keeps her door open to anyone in need. And where there's unity, there's strength. Uh, we watch out for one another. We care about one another. 
Sanders also started a charity to help neighbors who've lost loved ones and got speed bumps and sidewalks implemented on her street. Community officer Tommy Norman met her during his rookie year patrolling the Landsbrook neighborhood. He says it's because of her that he learned the true meaning of community policing. You know, she taught me as a rookie police officer the importance and the value to go out and make a difference and to meet people. Um, introduced me to neighbors around here. So it made my job easier as a police officer. So she's my hero just for that reason. Well, Sanders was even recognized for her consistent services and commitment to the community by the former North Little Rock mayor in 2008. Well, now to a city alderman in Jacksonville being defined as inspiration and motivation to all who encounter him. James Bolden is known as the motivator. City employees say he raised morale by teaching them how to stay motivated during tough economic times. Attorney Tom Fuquay says when he became extremely ill, Bolden showed up at his doorstep with something not even his family or doctor could give him. By the time he left after that hour, I was pretty much ready to take on the world again. Still couldn't walk across the room and didn't have a whole lot of strength, but boy, I was sure willing. Well, Bolden has also spent lots of time motivating soldiers as a drill sergeant during his more than 20 years in the armed services. But now, as a bishop at his church, he's serving a different army while also trying to help teens further their education. Uh, offered me a scholarship um, and helped me to kind of get through school. Um, always gave me a phone call, like, hey, you going to class? When people are down and nobody's there to motivate them, my job, I feel real strongly, is to get them to the point where they can overcome things. Whether it's church members, employees, or strangers, Bolden says just seeing them find strength in themselves makes it all worthwhile. This next hero is a former school teacher helping women get a second chance at life. In 2001, Sister Leanne McNally began volunteering, teaching life skills classes at the Pulaski County Jail. Well, since then, she decided to start the nonprofit center for women in transition. This after seeing a growing need for a program for women coming out of prison. Sister McNally was determined to help address the underlying issues they face. When I hear somebody's story, I got to do something about it. For example, Jeanette Hollister turned to drugs and crime after being raped by a family member for years. She spent more than 20 years of her life behind bars. But thanks to Sister Leanne's love and support, Jeanette and other ex-offenders are learning how to live differently and stay on the right path. She rescued me when nobody else would. She gave me a chance when nobody else would. She's more than a hero to me. She's like my mom, a mom I never had. Now, the center is funded through donations and grants, so if you'd like to donate or become a mentor, go to our website at THV11.com. Now to a different kind of second chance, coming from a woman in Sherwood. She is using horses to help war veterans heal after dealing with physical, emotional, or even behavioral issues. Frankie Stovall okay. created Project Great Equus ride. at Hearts and Hooves right. two years ago. This horse therapy program is tailored to each veteran, whether they're dealing with PTSD or simply trying to transition back into society. And no veteran has to pay for therapy. Executive Director Elizabeth Marg says it's all thanks to Frankie securing funds through grants, public speaking, and donations, raising $25,000. She's probably one of the most intrinsically motivated people I've ever met. So she's always um, looking for the next goal and um, working towards the next thing. Frankie recently spent nearly 20 hours getting a $5,000 grant from the Disabled Veterans National Foundation. And this past September, Project Equus was recognized in Washington, D.C. as one of the top 20 programs in the nation for its service to veterans. Now, let's introduce you to Donna Easley. This town hero is on a mission to save our four-legged friends. And I retired early, so now I get to do what I love. Her passion, helping rescue dogs like Pirate find loving homes. But in order to do that, they need to be prepped and ready to go. To be adopted from a rescue group, they have to be spay or neutered and have all their vaccines. Local shelters, though, often struggle to cover vet costs. So Donna decided to take action. If I could help raise some money and help some of the rural shelters and rural rescues around uh, central Arkansas, that would help them move more dogs from the shelter and keep them off the euthanasia list. She started a nonprofit, Help for Paws, two years ago. Pirate is just one of hundreds of dogs she's already helped. 
The mixed breed is now preparing to become a service dog. It's because of her that they get that second chance. Shauna Long has worked with Donna for years and describes her as the hardest working person she's ever met. Through yard sales and donations, Donna is able to raise anywhere between $1,200 to $4,000, often spending her own money. She cares the most that they get the very best home, that it's good for them. She cares that it is good for the, the family and she puts her whole heart into it. Since many shelters also have limited space, Donna tries to foster as many as she can until she finds the right home. And once that happens, on days like this, she gets to see Pirate and many others get a new home, off to live a better life they likely wouldn't have had without her help. I love to give back. I love to see people smile. And, uh, and believe me, if you could see these dogs getting off at the other end of transport, there's lots of smiles. Sweet story there. A well, Hot Springs woman is going above and beyond for more than just those who are less fortunate in her community. Plus, we catch up with a Plummerville teen who is giving up her hard-earned winnings to help make a wish foundation. Stay with us. This next hero is a Hot Springs woman going above and beyond to help the less fortunate in her area. But she's also helping serve those who are thousands of miles away. Benita Garibrandt started by feeding the homeless out of her car after starting a homeless ministry in downtown Hot Springs four years ago. Now, each week, she's handing out dozens of donation bags full of items. But her desire to help others goes far beyond these bags of donations. When she's not at home, she's in Africa, working at schools there. I just get to go out and share the love of Jesus with people, and that's all I'm here to do. Benita is a trained advocate for Compassion International and a sponsor to a young girl in Uganda. She's working on going back to teaching leadership conferences. Serving others and spreading the love from one person to the next is what Benita says she was called to do. Well, speaking of giving, it's not every day you see teenagers giving away their hard-earned money. But that's exactly what this teen in Plummerville is racing to do. When the helmet goes on and the engine revs up, it's game on. The youngest of the crew, 16-year-old Rebecca Harris, is literally gone with the wind. It's, it's impressive. I mean, uh, I've seen her outdrive people two, maybe three times older than her who had that much more track time than her. Charlie, the announcer here at Plummerville Super Speedway, has watched Rebecca race for the past two years, but says it's what she's done off the track that's so commendable. If there's an event for the children at intermission, Rebecca's always going to be right in the middle of that. You know, she's there to help organize, get them in position, uh, hand out candy and prize, anything she can do to make the kids happy. Those Friday night races have helped Rebecca rake in lots of cash, but instead of spending it all on herself, she decided to donate half her winnings to the Breast Cancer Foundation in Conway last year. When I gave the check to Carti that year, uh, last year, it was probably my biggest accomplishment. Rebecca donated nearly $3,000. She's just selfless. She puts everybody ahead of herself. Her aunt Jenny says whenever Rebecca has her mind set on something, she gets it done. This year, she plans to help a child through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Not only is she sharing her winnings, she's also raising money by selling these colorful stickers and bracelets that read Make-A-Wish one lap at a time. I know what it's like not to be able to do fun things like other kids get to do. Her goal is to continue to donate at least $3,000 to a worthy cause every year. Like I don't want any less. I want to be able to make sure that it's more or just as much. And if there's one thing this town hero can teach us all, it's the importance of giving. It's not about yourself in this world now. It's helping other people that don't have what you have. Well, it's been a little over a month since I did the story, so we decided to bring Rebecca in for an update on your fundraising efforts. How's that going? Um, it's going good. We actually raised a little over $1,000 more than what I planned on raising. So. Wow. And your goal was 3000 mm -hmm. so how much did you raise? $4,023. Congratulations. Thank that you. is amazing. So tell me, what are your plans for next year? Um, next year, I plan to raise money for our local PALS chapter, which is through our local FFA chapter. Mm -hmm. And high school kids go and mentor elementary kids once a week for about four weeks or four months. Mm -hmm. And then um, we do like canned food drives, 
and we do a Christmas Alliance where it's kind of like an angel tree at Walmart, but we actually sponsor just kids from our local school. Mm -hmm. And so, and it gets everybody in the family. It's not just the younger kids that get it, it's everybody that gets it. So I plan to sell some more stickers with the PALS logo and just keep doing what I was doing. All right, that is amazing. Congratulations again and Thank thanks you. for coming. Well, our special continues after this. Be sure to stay here. Welcome back. A local newspaper columnist and author is spreading the joy of reading with one bookcase at a time. Ten-year-old Nija is among 500 Conway children who've received a free custom-made bookcase with 12 starter books through a literacy project called Bookcase for Every Child. Her mother believes it's helped stimulate Nija's passion to read, which is exactly what Jim Davidson envisioned when he started the project ten years ago. We do it because we know that to equip these young people with literacy is the best thing on earth we can do for our nation. He wants to see these kids learning and to read better. And hey, one day, you know, you'd be surprised that they might be authors and writers. Well, volunteers helped build over 1,100 bookcases in Conway, Wynn, Mayflower, and Greenbrier. Four states currently have bookcase projects, but Jim's goal is to have one in every state. And this next man is also trying to educate the young by teaching them to never give up, whether it's money, housing, or just someone to talk to. This Little Rock basketball coach is dedicating his life to his players on and off the court. Charles Ripley, head basketball coach and athletic director at Arkansas Baptist College, wears many hats, but the most significant pertains to meeting the needs of his young athletes. These are youngsters that people said couldn't make it. So we, we, stay, we can do everything we can to help them. What did you think about the game last night? But help from Ripley stretches far beyond this basketball court. Just ask assistant coach Ronald Talley. He's seen his mentor do it all. Taking care of their health. If they need something, he'll, he'll run them to Walmart. If, if, the, if their money's low, they need to eat, he'll take them, go feed him. And he'll even put a roof over their heads. Two years ago, Donovan Shaw lost his mother one day before the last game of the season. Shaw says he had nowhere to turn. Coach offered me his home. It's just till I get everything situated on my feet. I remember that. Donovan would join four other former players at Ripley's home, whose dream of basketball at the two-year junior college had ended. And it was a choice of uh, them getting back out and, and not fulfilling their dream of getting a college education because they couldn't afford Otherwise, unless he had a place to live. Ripley wanted to make sure they all stayed in school. He got me through school, made sure everything was all right, you know, kind of like a father figure. Three of his former players who lived with him have since gone on to four-year colleges. Donovan and another former player are still working toward their goal. I had a son, but I got a job, so I was just taking care of him. But Coach told me it's not hard to do both. He encouraged me to come back and get my master's. Ripley's positive influence has been spread among hundreds of athletes, including former NBA player Derek Fisher, who's now the head coach for the New York Knicks, and former NFL star Keith Jackson, who started the organization Park to help lead teams to college opportunities. Failure is simply not an option for this coach. It's why he pours so much of his own money right back into the college and basketball program. I pay my basic bills and the rest of my life goes to these youngsters at Arkansas Baptist. Ripley's selfless acts have not gone unnoticed. In 2008, $2.5 million was donated to the college to build this residence hall, which was named after him. Now I understand why he does what he does. Uh, it's, he does it from the heart. And he says if you do something from the heart, it'll reach other people's hearts. Although he's never had any children of his own, it hasn't stopped him from being a loving and caring father figure to so many young athletes like Donovan. He's way more than a coach. He probably, besides family, he's the next big thing in my life. I don't know what I'd do without him. Another great hero there. A well, nine-year-old girl from Benton is proving you're never too young to make a difference. Bethany is changing the world with one bracelet at a time. She's achieved her first goal, but she's not stopping there. Details next.
know, when you think of role models, children typically don't come to mind. But a nine-year-old girl from Benton proved she is just that. Bethany is changing the world with one bracelet at a time. Her friend, 10-year-old Anne Marie Cox, suffers from a rare skin disorder called epidermolysis bullosa, or EB. EB causes her skin to blister in response to heat, movement, or friction. So every day, those blisters must be popped, drained, and covered. That's why Bethany Walker decided to start making rainbow loom bracelets to raise money to get Anne Marie a salt water therapy pool. I felt a little sad. I was trying to figure out what would help her and all that. Well, this pool will help build muscle and soothe Anne Marie's skin without the risk of infection. Bethany started a Facebook page called Bethany's Bracelets, and over 40 businesses helped sell them. When this all started in March of 2014, the goal was over $40,000. A few months later, $47,000 were raised with donations from places like California, Florida, Michigan, and everywhere in between. Well, the pool completed just in time for Anne Marie's 10th birthday in June. It gives her an opportunity to exercise and most importantly, a way to spend fun time with her family, especially since she has three brothers and three sisters. I'm glad that we got a pool so I could spend time with my family and have fun swimming. Well, unfortunately, the pool's drainage is not working properly, so Bethany is trying to raise around $6,200 for repairs. Also, now that the winter months are approaching, they're working on covering the pool so that Anne Marie can use it year-round. But that's not all. Bethany was recently inspired to raise money for a kickball field in honor of a Salem Elementary student who passed away this summer. You know, her good deeds haven't gone unnoticed. Bethany has received a $5,000 scholarship towards college for her community service. So it just goes to show that you're never too young to make a difference. Well, if you know someone who goes above and beyond, just email us information about them and what makes them a My Town hero to mytown at thv11.com. That ends our Thanking Our Everyday Heroes special. Have a wonderful holiday season, and we'll see you back here tonight for THV11 News at 10.